Simpson's paradox is an interesting problem that comes up uh, in two-way tables. So here we have some data from uh, UC Berkeley uh, College in California. And back in the uh, 70s or 80s, they were under a lawsuit for gender discrimination in their admission policy. And here is the tables of data that show their uh, admission and denial uh, records for the schools, for the different schools, and then the total for the entire university. If you're given a few minutes to look at this, I would recommend you pause the video, take a few minutes to look at this, and try to come to a conclusion as to why this lawsuit would have happened. If you don't spend uh, too much time looking at it, you're probably going to just jump to the totals. You're going to say, okay, well, there's 1,158 men admitted, and if you add these together, you can get the total and get a percentage. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. If we add those two together, we get 20, uh, 2651. And if we do that as a percentage, 1158 divided by that number is going to be about a 43, 40, let's call it 44% admit rate for men. Now, going with the same analysis on the female side here, we want to find the total for admitted and denied for females, 557 plus 1278. And if we take our numerator, 557, the number of people admitted, divided by the uh, total, we're going to get a roughly 30% admit rate. I'll switch to red here. 30% admitted for women. Now you can see why, given a school with this many thousand students uh, in it for both men and women, when you have percentages that are this dramatically different, there's definitely grounds for a lawsuit. But it turns out that the university who was defending itself uh, actually won the lawsuit, and for a good reason. And here's why. If you break it down and look at each school individually, you're going to find an interesting trend. Let's go ahead and do that real quick just for a couple schools. The engineering school, we have uh, 512 and 313, we get a total there, 825, and if we do uh, the admit rate there, we get 62%. Doing the same thing for females, we have 8919, and we take 89 out of that uh, total and we get 82%. Okay, and that's the case where females actually have a much higher admit rate uh, than men do. And if you go through the table, it turns out that in every single category, either uh, females have a higher admit rate, or males are very, very close behind, within a couple percent. Yet, the total is so dramatically different. And here's the reason why. The very competitive schools, like the literature school, have uh, similar numbers of males and females applying. The very competitive psychology program has far more females applying. The not very competitive engineering and business programs have almost no females, but have tons of men applying. So men apply to the schools that are easier to get into, therefore making their overall percentages look pretty good. The females are applying to the harder to get into schools, which makes their overall percentage look pretty low. Even though, if you look at one school at a time, you'll find that uh, it's either very comparable or slightly biased towards women getting in more easily. So these types of uh, tables, these two-way tables, can be very uh, misleading. The key to uh, successful analysis of these can be to break it down by each single category. That will give you a better picture than looking at a very misleading total when you don't know why that total is the way it is. These 
exposed options here is basically looking into a lurking variable that that total hides. So be very wary of the total in a two-way table when you don't know uh, some of this other information that kind of tells the backstory of what's going on.